Hey everybody, welcome back to Legit Street Cars and welcome to another Camaro video. If you missed the last one, I bought this, a 1988 IROC Z that had been abandoned for about 25 years in a storage unit and then outside in some guy's driveway for an additional two years. So this car looked pretty good in pictures, but when I got there, I found some rust on the body, then I bought the car for 1500 bucks, brought it back to legit street quarters and found even more rust underneath. So it's definitely a project, a 10 footer for sure, but I wanna see if I can get this tuned port 305 engine running because it's one of GM's finest engines. I'm just kidding, it's definitely not. And there's probably like a 50% chance that this engine was blown up and that's why they put it away 27 years ago. I don't know, but we're gonna find out in this video. And eventually I would like to get this car to drive. The brakes are locked up and it's probably got a million other issues but I wanna cruise my IROC. I'm an Italian living in Chicago. It's sort of a rite of passage to at some point own an IROC, at least, you know, if you're from my generation, it is. Must have tool. Let's see, so shocks are gone. Oh, this hood is heavy. All right. Hello, tune port. How are you? Okay, that's not safe. Gotta get the old Louisville slugger out. There we go. All right, I feel comfortable now. All right, so we're gonna get this party started by attempting to turn this engine by hand. And I have a sneaky little suspicion that this engine's locked. That wouldn't be abnormal after 27 years for the rings to be frozen to the cylinder walls a little bit. So we have a breaker bar on there, but we are gonna be very gentle with this because you can damage the rings. You definitely don't wanna kick it over with the starter either, or you can break the rings off. So I just wanna get a little feel of it. Here we go. And it's hard to tell, but I am putting a little force into it. It's not turning at all. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say this engine is locked at the moment, but we can fix that. I've done it before and we're gonna hopefully do it again. And you guys are gonna see some really cool footage throughout this video, like the POV view that you're looking at right now. And it's all being filmed on this, the Insta360 Go To camera. This is a very lightweight and portable camera and it's clipped to my hat right now. So I have my hands free to work on the car. It makes life very easy, especially when filming car videos. Oh, and if you guys are curious on the engine oil, let me show it to you. Cause I did check this when I bought the car. So if it was completely out of oil, we'd be in bad shape. But it's not, it is quite overfilled though. And to be honest with you, that can be a big issue too. Maybe it lost all of its oil and someone who didn't know what they were doing just dumped a bunch in, but at least it's not dry. Now, believe it or not, you can resurrect an engine that is fully locked up. I did this on my 1985 Firebird from a couple of years ago, the Banshee concept replica that I had on the channel. That thing was locked up. We pulled the plugs, uh, we sprayed a bunch of stuff, put some oil and trans fluid, everything in the cylinders, let it soak overnight. And that thing ran like a champ. So that's pretty much the game plan here. Uh, but first we're gonna pull a plug and get a boroscope in there and see what we're dealing with. All right, that was really loose actually, this spark plug, barely torqued in there. I guess it's better than getting stuck in the head, but kind of weird. All right, here's our first plug. We got an AC Delco. Looks really nice, a little too nice. I don't know about you guys, but it doesn't look like this spark plug has ever fired. I mean, it is brand spanking new. I gotta say, I've worked on Mercedes Benz that have easier spark plug access than this car, but we can get to this guy right here from the bottom. The one in front of it, you can barely even see the tip right there. And this side, the passenger side is even worse. So there's a plug, there's lots of spider webs and more rust. It's a wonderful place to be. All right, I got all eight spark plugs out. This actually only took me a half hour. It wasn't too bad, especially getting most of them from the bottom, but they all look fairly new, at least on one side. So the driver's side, and then one of them on the passenger side look to be brand new. You can see the white porcelain there. And then these don't have the white porcelain and they kind of just generally look a little bit older. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but either way, none of them are smashed. None of them um, are in terrible condition. Like I said, these look new. So anyway, with that, let's boroscope. All right, here we go. First cylinder, we got some valves that are slightly open. Piston is all the way up here. There we are. Okay, 
Let's move on to another one where we can see a little bit more of the cylinder. It's a nice little chunk of carbon there on that valve. We have to clean that up once it runs. What do we got? Light it up in here. Light it up. There we go. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. A little cross hatchings on the cylinder. You can see where the rings were resting for a while. So I don't know if someone else tried turning this engine over at some point, but this really isn't that bad. I'm sure the pistons are a little dirty, but that's normal. And overall, this is great. So far, so good. Okay, there we go. Hello, valves. And hello, piston. Nice, nice, nice. I like it. And we don't have anything with a hole in it, so it's, it's a good sign. Quaker State. Quaker State oil filter. Ugh. Come on now. It's not a good sign. Okay, here's another one. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't know if Quaker State's good or bad. Never done any testing on that. I'm sure it's fine. Um, what do we got here? What do we got? Yellow stuff on my cylinders? What is this yellow stuff on my cylinders? That looks like it was straight up painted. <laughs> it is very yellow. Very yellow indeed. I was going to say, is that rust? Unless there's something going on with my camera here, but wow. I mean, it's got to just be some light, some light rust. It's coming up as school bus yellow on the camera. That's definitely something I don't want to see, but let's, uh, let's, let's check out one more before we start fogging these. Here we are on the passenger side, more yellow paint, which is actually probably just rust. These are iron blocks and they can definitely rust. And luckily we had the spark plugs installed, so it doesn't look like water was sitting in here or anything like that. But um, yeah, at this point, we are going to want to put a bunch of oil in here and see if we can break these rings loose. One thing you also want to check before you think your engine is locked is that you don't have a pulley that's locked up. Now, normally we would use a half inch ratchet and put it right here and turn this tensioner to loosen up the belt, but it was broken and then I broke the rest of it. So go figure. So we'll take some tension off of the belt and then we'll go around, just make sure everything spins. So power steering, alternator, water pump, good. And you know what? While I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and Slide this belt off completely. There we go. Oh, this belt is like stuck to everything. But anyway, we have an air pump here. Now let's go ahead and just remove this belt. It is literally just stuck to all the pulleys. Just completely get this out of the loop. Watch this. <laughs> Pieces of it are coming off right on the alternator pulley. Great. Definitely needs a new belt if we get this thing running. That could act like a locked up engine in itself. The fact that the belt is stuck on all the pulleys. That would be great. Okay. Spinning alternator, power steering, water pump, idler, AC. This has an air pump. Doesn't sound the best. Everything spins. All right, cool. I don't think this thing has any coolant. Okay, with the belt out of the way, and this being real gentle here, nothing's turning yet. That's okay. Kind of figured that. Yeah, if you see a belt like this, you know it's been stuck on the engine for quite some time. And this is also a sign that the engine probably hasn't run for a while. All right, so here's our plan of attack to try and free up these piston rings. We're going to use some penetrating oil. This is pretty good stuff. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, and this little tube. So it's difficult to spray penetrating oil or anything into the cylinders, especially on this engine, with just this little straw. It's just hard to reach all of the spark plug holes. So we are simply going to feed this tube right into the holes, just like this. All right, so what we're going to do here is spray the penetrating oil through this tube. And I'm going to use my glove kind of to block it up like that. And something's going to come out. It's okay. But we're going to fill this tube, and then we're just going to shoot a little bit of air in there. And I'll, I'll probably repeat this probably three or four times on each cylinder. And right now we're really fogging out the cylinder. Next up, we are going to use a little bit of transmission fluid. And any trans fluid will work. This is all I got, the Mercedes stuff right now. And I'm putting that in my 100-year-old little oil can. Found this bad boy in my backyard when I dug it up to do sod like 12 years ago. Pretty cool. I don't really know if it's 100 years old, but the stickers they used back then are amazing because this thing was under dirt for a long time. It's a pistol oiler, do not use with water. All right, well, it sat out in the rain for years, so I don't know what they're talking about. It still works fine. Anyway, let me show you what I'm doing with this guy. Well, as you can imagine, the exact same thing I did with the penetrating oil. So we're gonna use our little pistol oiler. 
to put a bunch of trans fluid in this line. And we could just let it kind of gravity feed in there, but we'll help it out a little. There we go. All right, so now this cylinder has some penetrating oil and some transmission fluid and some engine oil. This was already filled about a quarter of the way with just engine oil. So we got a little concoction going on here. I've done this a few other times in other engines and so far, knock on metal, it's always worked. So let me show you how I'm gonna get to the other cylinders because that's like the easiest one to do. All right, so I have one of these hoses in one of the more difficult to reach spark plug holes. And this is why the shop air is gonna help, but this will actually get all the way up there. See that? All the way up the tube. We're gonna lose a little. Then we block it off and get a little air in there. And we're fogging it out. This is by far the easiest way to do this. It's very difficult to get a little straw up there. So I did that a few more times. Now we have our piston oiler. There we go. And there we go. All right, so that cylinder has plenty of penetrating oil, transmission fluid, and engine oil. So we're gonna do all eight and let this sit overnight. Here, let me just show you guys how difficult it would be to get a straw in there. It's very tight quarters, but it's no problem for the go-to. So we're gonna, gonna use the charging case here and we're gonna go right in here. So with the go-to going in, we can see there is one of the spark plug holes. That's probably one of the easier ones to get to. And then right in this area, is the other one so very tight quarters you really can't even see the rear spark plug holes and that's why we need the tube to feed right in there so we can get our penetrating oil in all right so we have some time while everything's soaking into the cylinders and hopefully freeing up the piston rings so let's get some f body motivation let's go for a drive in the turbo ta for good luck Snap it in, we're ready to go. All right, let's go for a little blast. <laughs> oh, I love this car, I love it. So right now the Insta360 Go2 is mounted to the windshield of the car and you can mount these little cameras everywhere. They are phenomenal for shooting car videos where the Insta is, is getting that footage, footage I wouldn't be able to get normally uh, with a larger camera. And I gotta say the audio on this thing is amazing. We even strapped it to the bumper of the Trans Am. strapped it to my electric scooter for the burnout footage. Here's a little bit more of that. And check this out. I can just simply turn the camera and now you guys can see exactly where I'm going. All right, we gotta do a little bit of shenanigans down to third gear. We got traction control off, foot on the brake, line lock activated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this car is just too much fun. It's just too easy to play around. I love it. And with the go-to on my hat, this is so, so nice for making these videos. So I can just have both of my hands on the wheel. Everything is nice and safe. We can see the cluster as well. And it's like you guys are in the car with me. That's awesome. The video quality is amazing. It films in 1440p and you can control this little guy right from your cell phone. You can edit right in the app or you can edit with their Insta360 Studio, which is totally free. This powerful camera also has video stabilization. You can do time lapses. It does slow motion. You could take a normal picture. And just look at how small, lightweight and portable this camera is. It has a magnet on the back so you can stick it anywhere. And I love this charging case so you can charge on the go. It's kind of like an AirPod case and it turns into a tripod as well. So you get a bunch of cool mounting options, including a pendant so you can wear this around your neck and you have a chest mounted camera and they sell a bunch of other mounting accessories as well to handle any kind of filming situation you could imagine. Best part is if you guys click on my link down below, you're gonna get 5% off. This is a limited quantity offer and everybody's gonna get a free go-to lens guard. So with that, let's go try and get my Camaro fired up and hope that the engine isn't totally grenaded. All right, it's the next day. We've had my little magical potion. 
brewing inside of these cylinders overnight. Let's see what happens here. Oh, oh. still not going. All right, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's going. <laughs> this must have been at a weird spot in the stroke there. It's going. All right, cool, look at this. Oh man, like butter. <laughs> we broke free another one, guys. I should patent that little potion. It worked. It worked. Let me see here. Oh yeah. Feels pretty good. All right, check it out, like butter. Even with the little ratchet, it turns so nice. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, so we've unlocked the power of this tune port 305. It sounds pretty good just spinning around. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods just yet though. We need to throw some spark plugs in here uh, and we need to check for fuel, although I have not heard a fuel pump at all. Every time I turn the ignition, I'm listening and it's probably dead. These things failed all the time back in the day. And uh, when they sit with old fuel for like 27 years, they, they don't like that. So uh, anyway, we'll figure out a fuel system, temporary, maybe, we'll see. Um, but first, let me turn this over a few more times. We wanna get all the oil and trans fluid and everything out of there. Um, and then we're gonna throw the spark plugs in, see what happens. All right, let's drop this oil filter. See what we can see. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> oh gosh, all right. Nice. <laughs> Got a little chocolate milkshake there. Sweet. Oh wow, it's just like condensation filled with water. Oh, this is horrible. It's like a loogie, ugh. Nasty. What do we got, what do we got? Nastiness. Oh, this is bad. Yeah. This engine was put away with some definite issues here. So yeah, I'm glad I didn't really put any real money into this car yet. We had to get a key for it, and that's about it. This thing is just filled with slimy goo. Oh, there's something that kind of looks like oil right at the tail end. Great. What I wanted to do was just fire the engine up for a few seconds and if it sounded okay, my next step was definitely changing the oil. But yeah, this thing was put away with a bad motor for sure. All right, we'll give this thing a fighting chance with some new oil. Just went and got the cheapest stuff I could find. All right, there we go. All right, spark plugs and wires are in and you can see all the oil and trans fluid that leaked out of the cylinders all over the place. We put quite a bit in there, but that's what it takes. And here it is on my floor. All right, so here is the Schrader valve and I've turned the key to position two a few times to prime. And let's see what we got here, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, not hearing anything from the fuel pump back there. So it's pretty normal. There's a little fuel on the Schrader valve. Yeah, and it smells very old. So on the third gen Camaro, this is the fuel pump relay and these wires are not looking too hot. Look at that, some of the insulation has just peeled back. Doesn't look like any of them are touching each other, but yeah, that needs to be fixed. And over here by the Louisville Slugger bat is the fuse for the fuel pump. Let's take a look at this guy. That's a 20 amper. What do we got? Yeah, looks good. Okay, before we start doing fuel pump diagnosis, we are going to cheat because I just want to hear this engine run before we really do anything. Just want to hear it run, make sure it's not knocking or clanking all over the place like crazy. So let's take off this cool Ram Air intake. So this is the factory intake for one of these third gen tune port cars. Some of them did go out to the side, I think. Not sure, third gen guys, let me know. Um, but this one's pretty sweet. You got two little filters right here that are pretty nasty. And uh, yeah, okay. This thing doesn't really look like it was maintained, does it? Um, so it gets air, there's baffles in here and stuff, but it gets air from uh, in front of the radiator. So that's pretty cold air. So pretty nice little factory system. And here we have a mass airflow sensor. So we're gonna spray something flammable through the throttle body and see if this 305 
We'll start. All right, guys, I actually did not need to take this entire air intake system off. I just snuck the straw in right there, so it's after the mass airflow sensor. Uh, you don't want to spray any of this on the mass airflow sensor, so this will be perfect. Um, so at this point, I got Peter. Peter, what, what, do you, what do you think of this thing? I love it. I mean, it's, the condition's a little iffy, but I've always loved it's it. It's sweet, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think the interior's not that bad, other than, other than the steering wheel, but like the seats will clean up. I don't know, you can at least like dream in here that it's in really good condition. The dream of the 80s is alive in this country. <laughs> sure. All right, dude. Uh, are you ready to fire this up? All right, let me get my uh, starting fluid fuel system finger on the trigger here. Um, okay, yeah, why don't you crank and then just open the throttle a little bit while I spray. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That was not good. Oh no, that did not sound good. Uh, we have cranked this engine over a bunch of times to try and get the oil circulating um, because obviously it had been dry after 27 years, but that sounds very clanky. It could be a rod knock, I don't know. But yeah, we got some, we got some smoke. <laughs> All right, let's just do it again. All right, we got my tune port injection can ready to go. Go ahead. Let's just keep trying. All right. Yeah, let's do it again. All right, let's give it a break. We'll give it a break. Let's get a jumper on this battery too. Okay, now we're running into some pretty serious problems here. We got a jumper pack on it and it seems to be locked. Uh, Peter, do it again. Okay, all right. Turning very, very slow now, great. All right, give it another one, Peter. Oh, okay. Think on your feet, Peter, diagnosis? Uh, I'm gonna say it might be a spun bearing that uh, is holding the motor up. Yeah, that's probably what we were dealing with before. Yeah. Because the cylinders look fine. The, yeah, the, the rings were probably good the whole time. It was just the, yeah. the crankshaft was frozen. And this thing was overfilled like two quarts with oil. So it's very possible that they ran it low on oil or on no oil. It locked up and then they put oil in it um, in an attempt to maybe save the engine or something like that. It's, it's pretty smoky in here. All right, I'm gonna poke around a little bit, but we might have a locked, a real locked engine that we can't fix uh, without rebuilding, so. Um, yeah. Okay, I think we're having some battery connectivity issues. Uh, the jumper's off right now. I just want to see how strong this battery is. Go ahead and uh, crank it over right now. Okay, all right. I think we're back in action. Um, all right, I'm going to do a little bit more starting fluid. And if you want to just crack that throttle, all right, and whenever you're ready. Huh. Those are bad sounds. That's like flex plate, like grinding bad sounds. Okay, let's do it again. Whenever you're ready. Man, I mean, it runs, but every once in a while, it kind of locks up like we're hitting it right at a sweet spot. This isn't good. Anyway, let's give it another one though. Man, when it does fire though, it sounds horrible. It sounds rod knocky. You wanna just w go wide open throttle? There we go. Okay, all right. It ran, it definitely ran right there. It didn't sound good, but it did technically run. The 88 IROC Z is alive, but in a very bad way. <laughs> I think this thing's got a rod knock. It sounds absolutely horrible. Uh, so we got it to go. Peter's at wide open throttle, kind of clearing it out, and I'm, I'm hitting it with the starting fluid. Um, but uh, yeah, and then every once in a while, it kind of just sort of locks up a little bit. It's like if we don't hit it at the right spot, it's, you know, it takes a while for it to go, and then it starts to go. So 
I think there's a possibility that they ran this thing like out of oil, very low on oil, and they spun a rod bearing or something, and then they tried putting a bunch of oil back in it to fix it. And that's probably when they realized they smoked the engine and it was a good idea to spend, you know, probably $150 a month on a storage unit for 27 years because that makes perfect sense. Totally could have bought like an LS1 car or something like that brand new with that money. But uh, anyway, I think this engine is bad. So there's really only one other thing we can do. Keep on going. Starting, we got a whole can of starting fluid, people. So let's do it. Full fuel throttle here. All right, all right, all right, poor little guy. This thing is definitely clanking away like none other. Oh man. I really picked a winner with this one, guys. At least with the 85 Banshee Concept Firebird, it was locked, but when it came back to life, it ran perfect. It was so quiet, so smooth. And then with the, uh, the last basket case F-Body, the LT1, uh, that didn't have a rod knock. That was a really good engine. It just had like leaking fuel injectors and, and mice and stuff like that. But uh, this guy is bad, man. Rust, bad engine. The whole fuel system doesn't work, probably needs a pump, which would be like the least of anyone's worries at this point. But yeah, this, this isn't good. And my shop is smoky. Very, very smoky. All right, guys, and there you have it. My 1988 Camaro IROC Z. It looks phenomenal on one side from about 10 feet away, and if you don't ask any questions. But as we've seen here, it does run. It does run, but the engine, uh, it doesn't sound very healthy, so... Uh, I think we can deduce from this video that in 1995, I don't think I've ever used the word deduce before in my life, in um, 95, they grenaded the engine, put it away in storage, and forgot about it, and paid a lot of money for storage fees. I, I mean, this must have cost them like $20,000 or something like that just to store it. Um, so, I don't know. Hopefully, Dave got a bunch of other cool stuff out of that unit. If you guys want to see that video and see some of the cool stuff that he got out, along with the Camaro, I'll link that video down below. At this point, I kinda have to figure out what I'm gonna do with this. Uh, I don't think it's worth like any kind of major restoration. It's a 305 hardtop with a lot of rust and a bad engine, but uh, I don't know, I gotta think about it. Let me know in the comments section, what would you guys do with this car? Uh, maybe it's a good part out candidate, I don't know. But uh, with that, check out the link down below for the Insta360 Go2. This camera's amazing, you guys are going to love it. And uh, if you haven't already, give this video a big thumbs up. Share the video with all your F-Body friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But most importantly, don't buy cars like this and have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.